Hi everyone, welcome to story time. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Hello everyone, how are you doing at home? I hope it's sunny today, you can play outside. Today we're going to talk about animals. Did you know it's Endangered Species Day this week? Do you know what endangered means? It means that that's an animal who we don't have many of living in the world anymore. So it's really important that we protect them. So I'm going to read about some different animals today. Today we're going to read Elephants Swim by Linda Riley. This is a Halton Muffin book. Elephants swim with their trunks held high. Kangaroos swim, but their babies stay dry. Babies stay in their pouches. Platypuses swim using their tails like a rudder. That helps them steer when they're under the water. Armadillos walk along the sides underneath the water. I didn't know that. We don't have armadillos here. Tigers swim to get out of the heat. Jaguars scoop up fish to eat. Sea otters sleep in the cradle of kelp. Kelp is a kind of vine that grows in the water. And the sea otters tangle their legs in it so they don't drift away. <gasps> wow! Squids swim backwards. Can you swim? And if you can swim, can you go backwards? That's harder. <gasps> Hippos sink to the bottom and sleep. Wildebeest wade where the water's not deep. <coughs> Pelicans plunge straight down from the sky. And caribou glide where their heads held up high. Polar bears paddle with the greatest of ease. Polar bears like to swim. And sea turtle babies run straight to the sea. Walruses swim, sing, sorry. Walrus, walruses sing as they swim along. Whales do too. What about you? Pretty soon it will be warm enough to swim before we know it. What's that? Giraffes can't dance. You know what? We're going to try this today. This book is by Gillis Andreas, and it's a scholastic book. And this is one of the books you can take out of the library once the library opens. And it has a CD, so you can play it. And it will beep when you need to turn the page. We're going to try this today. Giraffes Can't Dance by Giles Andre Illustrated by Guy Parker Reeves When you hear this sound, it's time to turn the page. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slick, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees. But when he tried to run around, he 
buckle at the knees. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance, where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad, because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthogs started waltzing, and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel. And eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish wheel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor. But the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald. The animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clock. So he crept off from the dance floor, and he started walking home. He'd never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing, and he looked up at the sky. Oh, so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed the cricket, who'd seen Gerald throw your arm. But sometimes, when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass, and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music, if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying, and his tail was swishing round. He threw his arms out sideways, and he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault, and leapt up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful. His mouth was open wide. I am dancing. Yes, I'm dancing. I am dancing, Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, It's a miracle! We must be in a dream! Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen!
How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. I bet you could dance. I bet everybody can dance. If all the animals came inside by Eric Pinder. This is a Little Brown and Company book. If all the animals came inside, my brother would cry and my sister would hide. The doggie would bark, the kitten would hiss. My parents would make funny faces like this. But I wouldn't look for a place to hide. I'd climb aboard an elephant for a ride. Thump, rump, bang, bump. The walls would tremble. The windows would shake. Oh, what a terrible mess that we would make. When all the animals played hide and seek, I'd cover my eyes, but the monkeys would peek. They'd laugh and they'd point, they swing and they run. I'd hide with a hippo and have so much fun. I think they would be making a mess in your house. Oh, crash, bash, zoom, boom. The walls would tremble. The closets would quake. Oh, what a terrible mess we would make. When they, all the animals wanted a snack, the skunk and the panda and even the yak, they would rush to the kitchen and chew up our food. Mummy would tell them, stop being rude. Lunch, munch, burp, crunch. The walls would tremble. The dishes would break. Oh, what a terrible mess we would make. When all the animals needed a drink, they'd slobber and drool all over the sink. The badger would blubber, the grizzly would burp. My sister would mutter, it's not nice to slurp. Phew, pew, ick, you. The walls would tremble, the cupboards would shake. Oh, what a terrible mess we would make. The lions would roar as they sprawled on the floor. The lemurs would lollygag right by the door. My daddy would try to sit in his chair. He'd holler and whoop, cause a porcupine was already there. Ow, wow, ouch, youch. The walls would tremble, the sofa would break. Cause oh, what a terrible mess we would make. The gibbons would giggle, the hyenas would laugh. The ostrich and I would go race with the giraffe. We'd follow the bears as they ran up the stairs. We'd bounce on the bed and knock over chairs. Rumble, jumble, pounce and bounce. The walls would tremble. The dresses would shake. Oh, what a terrible mess we would make. At bath time, my daddy would stamp, damper and stare. You can't take a bath with an octopus there. The faucet would leak, the bathroom would flood. Daddy would slip and he'd land with a thud. Splish, splash, split, splat. The walls would tremble, the toilet would shake. Oh, what a terrible mess we would make. 
When the animals wanted to play, they grab all my toys and they take them away. Upstairs and downstairs and out in the hall, the chipmunks would draw with my paint on the wall. Wibble, scribble, wipe and swipe. The walls would tremble and the crayons would break. Oh my, what a terrible mess they would make. The bats would be dealing my cards on the ceiling. The squirrels would be squealing. The paint would be peeling. The rhinos downstairs would be watching TV. They'd stand in the way and leave no room for me. Spilling the popcorn and causing a riot, whooping and snorting, they would never be quiet. Every last creature would sleep in my bed with oodles of pillows, one for each head. From sunset to sunrise, the wolves and the owls would keep us awake with their hooting and howls. We'd have nowhere to sleep, so we'd stretch and we'd yawn. We'd pack up our tent and go play on the lawn. As fun as a house full of animals could be, my dog and my kitten are plenty for me. All right, I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm going to use these puppets that I made, and it's based on a book called Dear Zoo, and it was written by Rod Campbell. I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. And you have to say, well, what did you get? They sent me an elephant. And then you say, did you keep it? All right, ready? I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. What did you get? They sent me an elephant. Did you keep it? No, it was too big. So I sent it back. I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. What did you get? They sent me a giraffe. Did you keep it? No, it was too tall. So I sent it back. I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. Well, what did you get? They sent me a lion. Did you keep it? No. It was too fierce. So I sent it back. I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. Well, what did you get? They sent me a camel. Did you keep it? No. It was too grumpy, so I sent it back. I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. Well, what did you get? They sent me a snake. Did you keep it? No, I sent it back because it was too scary. Too scary. So I sent it back. What do you think's next? I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. Well, what did you get? They sent me a frog. Did you keep it? No, it was too jumpy. So I, what did I do with it? I sent it back. I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. What did you get? They sent me a monkey. <laughs> did you keep it? No, it was too mischievous. So I, what did I do? I sent it back. 
I wrote to the zoo to send me a pet. And I think they thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. They sent me a puppy. They sent me a puppy. And did you keep it? Yes, because it was just right. Today for your craft, there's not really craft a, a bag of craft stuff in there. But there's this piece of paper that shows you some animals that you can make with your hand. I'll show you what I did. I traced my hand on my board so it was bigger so that you could see it. Can you tell what I made? I'm going to give this one a tail. Here's my elephant. And then I turned my hand sideways. And what did I make? Can you tell what it is? It's swimming in some water. What is it? Is that a fish? I think I'll make him orange. Maybe at home you could trace your hand on a piece of paper and make it into some animals. Send me a picture so I can see what you did. I'll see you next week. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye.